All right, guys, what's up? We're back at the garage today. We're finishing up a couple last things. Uh, my first event is coming up in about a week, so um, I ordered some parts to finally get my parking brake working. I picked up some new brake shoes and springs and stuff uh, from FCP Euro. Um, my my uh, brake shoes in the back are all cracked up and falling apart, so I figure these new ones will probably help the parking brake grab a little better and help me lock up the rear wheels. All right, so I already got the driver's side done. I kind of wanted to get an idea of what the process was going to be like so I could explain it to you guys to the best of my ability. Uh, the way I go about things is probably not the best way, but it's the way I do it. And I don't know, hopefully it'll be able to help you guys out if you ever need to do these brake shoes. So the first thing you're going to want to do, you're going to want to get this brake caliper off. All that requires is a 15 mil wrench. And there's just one bolt on top back here and then one bolt on the bottom back here. There we go. There we go. Got that one. Ooh. Once you break them, they should be able to just come out with your fingers. All right, once you get that unbolted, you're going to want to take this brake caliper off. Should just slide right off. All right. And then you want to kind of just tuck it up back here to make sure it doesn't hang down and pull on any of the brake lines or anything. <clears throat> Alright, then after you get that off, you're going to want to take out this little bolt that holds on the uh, brake rotor. Uh, all it takes is a 6mm Allen key, and it's usually not too hard to get off. Oh, here, wait. Uh, Gabe, can you go hit the parking brake for me? Yes, sir. You're good, it's locked. That was good enough. And that just comes right off. Right. And then once you get the parking brake off, you should be able to just wiggle this off. Here, let me use two hands for this. All right, sit, so came off pretty easy. And now you have access to your parking brake assembly. You'll definitely want to take pictures of all this uh, back here so you can uh, remember how it goes back together because it can get a little confusing if you have a bad memory like me. So there's going to be these two pins, one on either brake shoe that is holding the brake shoe uh, to the hub itself. So I have found enough fingers so what I do is I just get in here and I push it down with my thumb and I try and turn it and then once you once you turn it enough, it should just pop out. There we go. Boom. Just a little, this little piece. So next thing you're going to want to do, you're going to want to take this little adjuster piece out from the top. Uh, this will give the shoes room to come together and it'll make it a hell of a lot easier to get these springs out. Uh, what I did to get it out is I just got some needle nose pliers or you can just really use any pliers and then I just grabbed onto one side and I spread them apart until it was able to just kind of fall out. So I got the top spring out. Uh, since the two shoes were pushed uh, closer together, it gave it a bit of wiggle room. So I was able to just get the needle nose pliers in through the end of the spring, clamp down on it and just pull it until I was able to unhook the spring from that little hole right up there. Uh, at this point, all we have left is to take out the last spring and this um, the little bit that connects to the actual parking brake cable. Um, and since I'm just getting rid of everything, you can kind of just pry this and bend it down. And this will kind of give you a bit of room to try and wiggle out this bottom metal piece. Now, since this part is connected directly to the parking brake cable, in order to give it a little more wiggle room, you're going to want to allow more of the parking brake cable to come through. So, you're going to want to come in here, pop off this little boot that goes on the bottom of your parking brake, and you'll have access to these two lines. These are the two parking brake lines that go to either side. Uh, so what you want to do is you'll want to loosen up both these bolts and extend them out all the way to the end. Um, I found the best way to do that is to use a 12 mil for this back one, slide it over, and then for that front nut, you're just going to slide a, a deep uh, 9 mil socket over it to loosen it. And then once you break those loose, you should be able to just extend them all the way up to the front and then that'll give you more line to push through and will make it easier to get that part out. 
And to make sure that this line doesn't get pulled all the way through and you'll have to like route it, reroute it back through, uh, I just left the nut on the end that way it just won't get pulled all the way through. All right, so at this point, you're kind of just going to want to keep trying to pry at this to get it unhooked and off of this. Um... God, what is this part even called? I'm tired of just calling it this metal thing. Which one? The one that part connects to the park and brake cable. Oh, shit, I don't even know. You don't even know? <laughs> All right, we're just going to keep calling it the little metal thingy. Uh, so, yeah, you'll, you'll just want to keep kind of prying at this to try and get it off. It takes some finagling. Like I said, there's probably a better way to do this, but this is the way I'm doing it, and it's kind of working so far. <laughs> Alright, so after messing with it long enough, eventually everything will kind of just fall out. Once you get this unhooked off of one side, the other side will just come out with it, and then you kind of have everything free. Since we loosened the nuts on the parking brake cable, we can now kind of pull this through a little bit further. Now that we have it out, you can flip this open and that will expose where the parking brake cable connects to this. Um, there's a little dowel pin that's holding the parking brake cable to it, so you just want to push that out and then the parking brake cable will just come free. So that just pushes right out. Make sure you do not lose this piece. If you lose this piece, you are going to have a terrible time and you're not going to be able to put this back together. Now that's off though, you can kind of just take this off the parking brake cable and you just have the cable left over. Since we're going to be reusing these two pieces, I'm just going to hit them with some brake clean to clean them up, make them look all pretty, and make sure that they function as normal as possible. All right, I got these parts all cleaned up. Uh, along with spraying with brake clean, I just hit them with a wire brush real quick. I didn't go too hard. I didn't really care to get these like sparkling clean because they're just going to get all messed up again. But they're looking a lot better than they did before. Uh, now that we got that out of the way, though, we can get to reassembling this. Um, these are the brake shoes I got. Uh, the kit that I got from FCP Euro also came with new springs and new pins. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, you're gonna to want to reattach the parking brake cable to this piece right here. The little piece just flips out, and then you want to uh, refer back to the pictures that you took previously and make sure that you orient this correctly or else you're just gonna have a tough time the rest of the time trying to put this back together. All right, once you have this parking brake connected, you can just fold this on back together, flip it over so it's in the right orientation. And then you just kind of have to jam it back up on that perch right there. All right, but once you get that on, uh, the next step is going to be pinning these shoes to the actual assembly. Uh, as you can see, there's these little holes on either side. And they correspond to the middle hole on each brake shoe. Um, you're going to want to use, you're going to use uh, these pins to just put it through. And then just like we did uh, before, you're going to kind of push in and twist and that'll keep it secured. Uh, this is probably gonna be the hardest part of this entire assembly. Uh, it's a really tight fit to get into that hole and you have to line it up almost perfectly with the brake shoe in order to get it in. So when you went go to install these, you wanna make sure that this little like triangular hole is on top. All right, I got one side in. It still took me about 10 minutes even though I did two others on the other side. Like I said, these are a pain in the ass. All right, Marco just hit me with the big brain and gave me a little tip on how to get these in earlier. If you line up the lug holes with the actual hole uh, for the pin, you can get an Allen key through that fits directly in there. And then you use that, so you can kind of line up the pin by looking back behind. You can line it up with the hole. And then you just push in with the Allen key, and then you can just turn it. And then boom, it's in. So yeah, if I would have done that, that would make my life a lot easier for the last three pins, but it's okay. All right, so the next thing you want to do is get this top spring in. Uh, I didn't put the adjuster bit in yet uh, because this way I was able to pull the brake shoes together. That way I wouldn't have to try and stretch this uh, spring super far to get it over to the other hole. Um, what I did though, since I had to stretch it just a little bit, I just got it inside of the hole here on the left and then I just grabbed onto it with some needle nose pliers and just yanked it over and set it in the hole. Alright, so the next thing that you're going to have to put in, you're going to have to get this, uh, this adjuster piece back in. Uh, you're going to need a second hand for this. Uh, what you're going to have someone do is you're going to have them use the needle nose pliers. And they're going to go back as far as they can uh, to the back, and then they're just going to 
they're just gonna spread it apart. And then once they have it spread apart, you're just gonna place it inside. All right, now that we have that back in, we can get to putting in the last spring, which is this little one. Uh, before you go to put the spring back in though, you just wanna come in here and make sure that the brake shoes are seated within the little notches on this bottom metal piece. And you wanna make sure that each of the ends are butted up against this little block on the bottom. Uh, once you get that figured out, you can hook in the spring on that side and then you will end up using your drum brake tool in order to grab onto the spring and yank it over into the other hole. All right, with that side in, we can come on over to the other side. The spring's sitting right there. And then we can hook on the drum brake tool and then you'll use this to just pry it over to that hole. All right, now that we got the last spring in, uh, all we have left to do is to adjust uh, this star piece right here. Um, you want to turn the star piece and uh, as you turn it, it will start to extend. And uh, once you get to where you think it's about right, you want to put the rotor back on and you'll want there to be just a tiny bit of drag, just like the tiniest amount of drag between the rotor and the brake shoes. Um, and then once you get that all uh, adjusted, then you'll want to go back inside the vehicle and you'll want to readjust the parking brake cables themselves. All right, so we got it all adjusted. And as you can hear, there's just barely any drag, if any at all. When you go to tighten up the parking brake cables again, you want to tighten them just until the washer on the bottom starts to snug up against the little metal sleeve that it goes through. Once you got all that done, all that is left to do is to reattach the brake caliper and put your wheels back on. Hi, Jamie from the future. I forgot to explain one part. Uh, once you get the rear brake shoes installed, you want to make sure you seat them. Uh, it's a pretty simple procedure. You just want to drive the car regular and then once you're going about 20 miles per hour, you want to pull up the e-brake and then drive with the e-brake up for about 100 yards. And then you'll put the e-brake down, let the brakes cool down for about like two minutes and then you just repeat, repeat that two more times and then you're good to go. <laughs> that about does it though. I hope you all learned a little something from this. I know I didn't go too far in depth. I, I kind of just went about it the way that I thought worked best for me. Uh, I'm sure you guys have a bunch of different ways of doing it, but yeah, like I said, this is just the way I do it. Uh, hope y'all, hopefully y'all learned something. I hope y'all enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.